Zazz. Zazz. Oh, yeah. Bitsy. Woo. And Whipper. G'day, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Um, big topic flying around at the moment. If you've asked for your partner's parents' permission to marry them and they've said, no, we want your story. It's not a good start, is it? No. I mean, I think basically when Lisa's parents realised we were dating... They kept yelling out, yes, yes, yes. We'd only been together for a week, but I think they realised they'd struck gold. They'd yeah, struck I think it was a man of all man. It would have been a of level the, of disappointment. Not really. When you knocked on Dave's door and said, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, you would have gone. And then he went, my God, think twice, Dave. And then a hero comes along. And I, I was mean, there. Lisa's a gorgeous hmm? girl. I mean, there would have been high hopes for the whole family. Gorgeous so for them girl, just to say yes to that. Gorgeous guy. Put them together and doves will fly. It's like, you know. Thank you, Macca. Thank you, mate. It's like a meat raffle at the pub. I'm not a meat raffle, but you a know, prize, and then yes. You get to go up and choose what meat raffle you would like. And, and I'm the think, prize. You know what? I won one last week and Did I forgot you? to take it home. I just Where realised. Were you? At the Unity Town Hall in Balmain, I've just realised that. Someone's taken that. Oh, my God. Will yeah. it be refrigerated? So there was some porterhouse steak. I've got some chicken schnitzels already made up as mm. well. Oh, that's gone. Get on to that. It's drank too much. <laughs> Damn. So, um... Here's the podcast. The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Love to know if you got a no, if you were rejected when you asked for somebody's hand in marriage from the parents. Uh, traditionally, as we mentioned, it's normally the guy who will go and speak to the father of the bride-to-be and say, I would like to ask for your permission for me to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. It's probably a blessing in disguise, isn't it? Because if you're going to a parent and they say no to you... You're like, oh, I'm getting out of trouble here. Because if they... I mm. mean, if there's if there's pushback, yep. right, from the parents and they don't like you and they don't want you to marry their daughter, yep. I think you're getting out of trouble. No, That's because it. think about if you'd asked if, if you... BJ, would you have just given up if they if someone had said no to you? Would you'd you have just... The way, you believe, yeah, the way you felt about her in that moment, would you have gone, oh, actually, yeah, you're right? You know, if you're in love, without a doubt, you, you continue it, Sarah. But this is the thing. You know that there's going to be... Uh, uh, she's not going to have her, probably your parents in her life. There's going to be... But that mm, can happen fiction. anyway. Do you like, know... You're right. There is nerves that come with it, Sarah, and you would hope that maybe you can push through it if it's a no and you can talk it through with the parents. I remember um, Lisa's parents were living on the Gold Coast at the time, and I rang Dave and I said, Dave, mm. danger. I've got a big question I need to ask you, but I want to ask you in person. He said, it's a yes from me. And I went, no, 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 no. I want to do this in person. So I told Lisa I was going into the city to try and find a suit to buy because the races were coming up. So I was gone the entire day while I jumped on a Jetstar flight and went and met the parents to have lunch, get the yes, and then come back again and go, couldn't find a suit. Oh, that's There's a cute. Couple of, Big day. A couple of things we need to point out there. You don't fly Jetstar. I had no option. It was a tight turnaround. <laughs> well <laughs> picked up. Business, business Qantas Huge was taken hole. on the day and I had to drink my way through the flight. So you got back that night without that her afternoon. knowing. So it's that easy just to... Slip away for a day and come back without them knowing. No, no, that's not the angle I was going for there. Um, But, you know, it was a nerve-wracking time. Mm. But, you know, we had a caller the other day on the show um, saying that the parents didn't approve for for religious reasons. So we've been married 20 years, three kids. My mum disapproved of my husband because he's a different nationality, uh, 14 years older than me, different Mm. religion. So it's kind of like the trifecta of what most parents uh, don't want their child to do, and I did it. Um, Yeah. But, yeah, it's been 20 years and she hasn't seen my children. See, this this is the other thing as well. If you do continue love, you're looking for that love, you're not going to have those parents in your life. And then your partner would be pretty upset by well, it too. sort of. In in the case of my older sister, it's not that your family walk away. Dad said no, but it's more that you're just sort of watching with anticipate. Like, mm. everyone's a bit anxious as though when's this going to fall over. So everyone was there to support. But, you, you, yeah, I would think for her, would you not have felt that we were all watching you? Like it's going to come apart. Yeah. Did Gary ask Bill? Uh, his own father, yeah. if he could marry oh, me. Sorry, your dad, um, Dave. No, he did. He did. He went round. I mean, we had two kids at this point, but he did go yeah. wake yeah. them all up. Got him a beauty. He knocks on the door, and Mum said, "Oh, Dave's gone to sleep." And James goes, "Could you just wake him up?" Mum's like, "Oh, are you all right?" Obviously, Dad being Dad's a doctor. A doctor. Dad yeah. comes out and goes, "James, are you okay?" You oh yeah, I just I would like to marry Sarah. They're like, "What? You've already got two kids." Like I was asleep. 
He was oh, fine awesome. with it. He awesome. was fine with it. He was chuffed. It's no, suppo- but you know the other thing too? I would say in order of things, before you propose, you've probably bought the ring before you speak to the parents. Mm. I think that's the mm. order I did it in. Neither is, of mine have been like that. Which was probably the wrong way around because mm. you should try and get that permission first. George in Liverpool, did you get a no when you asked permission to marry? Yeah, definitely, mate. No, well, say everybody calls me George, yeah. freckle, red hair. So what happened is I went to ask for, you know, Lydia's hand and the father-in-law goes to me, nah, you're not Macedonian background, mate. Are you, you're red-headed, freckly bloke. He goes, there's no way you're Macedonian. Oh, so I, I spoke to him in Macedonian. Yes. I said, how do you think I know Macedonian? And he goes, oh, you probably studied over there. He goes, no, no, no. He goes, you need to prove to me, he goes, that you're Macedonian background. Otherwise, you can't have my daughter. Oh, the wow. And they're going, mate, this is unbelievable. So I showed him my driver's license, spoke to him Macedonian. He still wasn't convinced until he did a background check on me. Oh. <laughs> so he rang up yeah. Macedonia to find out in Veles who knows this bloke. <laughs> My, my parents were furious oh. because we followed all the traditions. Like I went there with my brother, yeah. and then when you go for their hand, you go there. We call it a barde. It's basically uzo yeah. in this, like it's an alcohol bottle, yeah. and you do it properly. You ask for the father, you know. But I thought I'm speaking to you in Macedonian. <laughs> I followed your tradition. What do I need to prove? It's like, what do you want me to do? Like a DNA test? Like, what do you want? Is this big fat Greek wedding? Do you want oh me to go over, you know, like, get you... Ancestry.com to show to you that I'm from Macedonia, like oh. Alexander the Great? Oh, <laughs> so, so it was big fat Greek wedding, mate, in real life. Did he, did he, did it put you off him a little bit, George? Well, let's put it this way. In Macedonia, we've got this old saying that when you break a rope, you can always tie it up, but there'll always be a knot. Yeah. And basically, my relationship with him was like that. Like, I still showed him respect yes. because we do respect the elderly. Like, it's a Macedonian tradition. But as I said, we will talk about the weather, but we will never get like that father in law intimate relationship. Mm. It was um, like that until the day he died, basically, about six years a, ago. A Did you double sheep shake. I've been married now for 34 years. Oh, wow. We just had our first grandkid. Did you, so, t- did yeah. you tell your wife, Life George? interesting, mate. Put it that way. Did you tell your wife at the time or did you keep it quiet, George? Sorry? Did you tell your future wife that wh- how her dad treated you or did you keep that quiet, George? Oh, no, no. She knew something was going on because yeah. they lived in a two-storey house in Campbelltown. Yeah. So I was downstairs and the conversation was getting a bit heated because I was a little <laughs> bit upset. Oh. Because to me, it's like, mate... I'm a good-looking bloke. You know, I, I work. So what's your issue? George. Yeah, they were upstairs. And then, as I said, as I walked out, he goes to me, you know, you can't have a hand in marriage. He goes, until you prove to me you're Macedonian. Oh, my God. And as I walked out of the room, inside the house, there was like a little veranda. Yeah. Like, you know, the internal veranda. Yeah. And my future wife was there with the mother-in-law. Oh. And I just looked at her and I said, this bloke is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> George is singing like, the national anthem. Unfortunately, these people came from Macedonia, what, 40 years ago, never learned English, and to them, everything was suspicious. And you can just imagine, you know, a red-headed, frankly, Aussie bloke with the name George. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get more Australian than that. Oh, well, it makes for a great story, though, Macedonia. doesn't it, George? It's well, a great story, buddy. That is a great story. Sharon in Pitt what's your story? Well, I've been married twice. My first husband was really traditional and he wanted to ask my parents for permission and I told him that if if there was no way I was going to get married. Why? Because they they just disapproved him, Sharon? No, no, not at all. They they quite liked him. It was more about the fact that it had nothing to do with them. It was my decision. It wasn't theirs. Oh, Oh, right. So they rejected the idea. Mm. No, I rejected the idea. Oh, you didn't want to marry him yet, Sharon. You weren't ready. No, 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 no she's she saying didn't want she her parents did, but to be she's involved. like, it's not your decision, it's my decision. Oh, yeah. Don't okay. ask so my don't parents. So don't ask them. They're not. Yeah. You're not marrying my parents. You're marrying me. Exactly. Yeah. Like, and the same with giving away. Right. My father didn't give me away. That was my choice. I walked myself down the aisle. Oh, jeez. And were your mum and dad alright with that, Sharon? Um, I don't really know. We didn't ask them. <laughs> do you have do a you relationship have parents? with them now, Sharon? <laughs> yeah, I have a great relationship with my parents. Um, so, but yeah, ultimately, marriage was my decision. It had nothing to do with my parents. So, my both of my husbands had to understand how independent I was yeah. and how important to me it was that I made that decision, and it had That's nothing right. to do with my parents. I mean, I get Sharon, it, but at the same, sorry, at the same time, you are 
he is moving into your family. You're becoming a unit. You're becoming that, a team. That's not defined by marriage anymore. Like my example of, of Gary, we he didn't go and ask permission if we could have kids. Mm. So we were together, living together, yeah. had kids, well, bought you, a house, um, the whole bit. We just didn't that do you the ceremony. did that outside of marriage is disgusting. Well, you're not religious, well, Sh- so put your head in. Absolutely disgusting. Can I just ask Sharon one more question? If you've been married twice, making the decision to marry that first one, was it the right <laughs> one, Sharon? <laughs> I one at the time, and I've got two beautiful kids out of it. Good oh, answer, there you Sharon. Go, Your parents could have saved you. Bianca from Pendle Hill. What happened with you, Bianca? So this story is my best friend, and I have her permission to share it. Yeah. Sure. Um, this boy asked for her hand in marriage, and my best friend's back in India. Yeah. And her dad said no because he didn't have as much money as them, and he's from a different religion. Gotcha. Mm. And they were together for 11 years. It fucking pissed all of us off. But we couldn't do anything about it. And now my best friend's married. We don't know if she's happy. I mean, obviously she's happy, yeah. but not from within. You know is, what I mean? She, is she married to the same guy? or is, no, no, so, no, someone else. <gasps> oh, what's so a broke up with the one that she was truly in love with? Yes, 11 years, high school sweetheart. Oh, Man, I thought oh, love, love should conquer all. Yeah, well said, mate. I've said it. Um, that's really sad. Isn't Do, it? Does she ever talk about that guy still, Bianca? They are still good friends, and I actually live with this guy, um, oh, and he's still so a good friend a of us. But it was so hard for us because I'm still best friends with my best friend. I'm still <sighs> friends with this guy, and I'm in between. You've hooked up uh, with him, haven't yeah, you, Bianca? Bianca? Have you hooked up with him now? Now that he's off the top, I'm married. Oh, sorry. No, no, yeah, but the question no, was: no. Have you hooked up with him, Bianca? <laughs> No, no, no. Bianca might be a bit like, like a you, Sarah, thing. living in sin. Oh, thank you. Oh, mm. <laughs> you live in sin every day. What are you talking about? You d- played everything by the rules, by well, the, the church, and you, I was blessed by the gods. You murdered that bacon and egg roll <laughs> there, mate. It's not a sin. But it's, it's, it's not a sin. sin. It is a crime against Paul. It's a crime <laughs> against my stomach. <laughs> yeah. But I loved it. How good is exploring our amazing backyard again? And ticking off all the big Aussie things, pineapples, bananas, melons. Oh, hearing you say that makes me hungry. Head to whatif.com and start planning your big Aussie adventure. What if? It's Aussie for travel. We're about to change somebody's life. It's last dad standing. Fitzy and Whippers 10K last dad standing. The legendary Father's Day sale is on now at Barbecues Galore with a huge range of barbecues and gift packs. Shop in store or online now. All right, this is it. Ryan from Gregory Hills is our carryover champ. Welcome to the studio, Ryan. Hi. Good morning, guys. Oh, Ryan, I made a joke on air before that you mentioned the fact that you hadn't slept due to the nerves of what's up for grabs today. Is that true? That is very true. So, oh, my gosh. Ryan, you are, what do you do for a job? Uh, I'm a teacher. You're a teacher. Okay, you've been, students have been helping you out. Yesterday we asked you if they were all listening in, so this morning the whole class would be tuning in, wouldn't they? I really hope not. Right. <laughs> Ryan, what is the capital of New Zealand? Uh, See, so, as soon as these questions come, my go, my, my my you, mind goes completely blank. That's a, that is a really, really bad warm-up. That is um, a really bad warm-up. It's Wellington. It's Wellington. Not Auckland. Okay. That this question is... is not on the sheet. All right. What we do have to talk about here as well, because you're you're up against Aaron today. Aaron, welcome to the show, buddy. How you going, boys? Now, when Aaron uh, Aaron's registered, he's gone to the Nova player. He's playing for $10,000 today. He's coming on the Friday morning. Aaron, when you walked into the studio here before, you were like, oh, my gosh, I know that guy. Yeah, I saw him walk in the street and then uh, I knew that Ryan was the carry of a champ and I looked up and I was like, that's Ryan. And yeah. he was walking into the building and I was like, Ryan, and he turned around and then, yeah. So how do you guys know each other? Uh, we used to work together at Club Menai about five years ago. Oh, so you're oh, Club Menai oh, boys. Oh, yeah. Very small world. Jeez, you'd have yeah. some stories from Club Menai, wouldn't you? Not yeah. for now. Nothing that can be shared. <laughs> oh, <no. Yeah. laughs> After nine o'clock. All um, right, so Aaron, can I just ask too, $10,000, where's it going if you have a win? Oh. Uh, oh, well, I want to go on. I want to take my family on a holiday. Like that's the, the proper answer. Yep. Uh, no, but really, my boys they uh, they haven't seen anywhere outside of really where they kind of grew up the last yep. couple of years. So I just want to adventure, take away and I kind of owe it to my partner. I so. love that, mate. Good luck yeah. today. All right, here we go. All right, Ryan, you are our carryover champ, so you will be going first. If you get one wrong, power goes over to Aaron. Whoever has the power at the end of sixty seconds takes home ten thousand dollars. Okay, the runner-up will be taking home $500 cash and a barbecue thanks to barbecues galore. Here we go. Ryan, your 60 seconds starts 
Now, which US state has the nickname Aloha State? Hawaii. Hawaii is correct. On a pirate ship, what were you made to walk? The plank. Yes. Finish this 2003 movie title. How to lose a guy in... Pass. Pass. Uh, Ten days. Over to Aaron. Aaron, before Advance Australia Fair, what was our national anthem? Pass. God Save the Queen. Uh, Over to you, Ryan. Who is the younger sister of Elsa in the film Frozen? Anna. Anna is correct. Which car company has the slogan, Let's Go Places? Pass. It's Toyota. Over to Aaron. Aaron, which is larger, a midi or a pint? A pint. Correct. Who plays the character Ron Burgundy in the film Anchorman? Pass. Will Ferrell. Over to Ryan. Who in 2013 had a titled song, Don't You Worry, Child? Too long, Swedish House Mafia. Over to you. In which Australia? Yeah! $10,000. Oh. No way. What a moment. Control came straight to you. What a tight ending. That oh. is massive. Ryan, I'm sorry. Your three seconds was up Silly. there. Oh, that God. was oh. Swedish House. I knew Martin. the answer too. Did you knew that yeah. one? Oh, oh man. man. How are you run. feeling, Ryan? Uh, okay. Oh, come over here, mate. Some, come onto the mic. Is there a little bit of heartbreak there? A little bit of heartbreak. Oh. Uh, Knew the answer as well. Just did couldn't you? Get the words you, just out. Couldn't, you know what? I know that feeling when you put on the spot and it's in there, and the filing system in your brain can't get it to your mouth. And oh my god! Do you know what? You got the younger sister of Elsa as well. I thought you're doing quite well here. When he answered that, oh. I thought I was. Not, that's oh it. You're man! Yours. <laughs> Ry, you've got the five hundred dollars and a brand new barbecue awesome. from Barbecue Thanks, Galore. Guys. So there's a win there. Well done, Aaron. Ten thousand. Thank you, boys. Well done, yeah. mate. Well, well done. Hey. Bye. It, the legendary Father's Day sale is on now at Barbecue Galore with a huge range of Barbies and gift packs. Shop in store or online now. Aaron's got the novelty <laughs> check high in the air. Good news is another ten thousand uh, dollars on the line for Monday, guys. As we kick it off again with Last Man Standing, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Yeah, this is a bit of a hail mary here, but I want to see if I can get some callers. And you can remain anonymous, but I want to hear if you know a story of someone who's had to do a bit of a dodgy to sell something. Because it may be worth a lot of money. Now, the reason why I'm saying this, because there is a shipwreck off the coast of Western Australia. It's called the Batavia Shipwreck. And now it's from 1629. Mm. That's when it sank in the early hours of the 4th of June, 1629. I with remember. More than 300 people on board. Now, the Batavia had coins and gold. There was treasure on that ship, Sarah. Mm. Right? And it's a shipwreck that a lot of people have gone down and dived for um, but didn't know this but in 1992 a diver went down and took a few of the coins. Well, you're allowed to. Well, no. Are you? No, you are. No, you're not. Law of the sea. No, legally you are not. Finders keepers. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No. But how would you police that, to Whipper's point? Like, you if you dive and you see it, someone's just left it there. Well, the only reason is that they've been returned um, to the Western Australian Museum because the man that went down there in 1992, so he's held on to these coins. These coins are from the 1500s, 1600s, so they're worth millions. He's held on to it since then. He recently tried to register a permit to say that they were his and he owned them. And he got busted, and now he's had to return the coins. They're not his. Mm. I, I, yeah, I don't I mean, understand. There are, there are professional teams that work around the world trying to find valuables mm. from shipwrecks. There's some great TV shows on it too. And they, they and there's one in particular. I can't remember the name of the ship or the story, but the amount of gold and the amount of wealth on the ship when it went down is massive. And you're talking about hundreds of years ago, so the haul is priceless. Mm. You've just got to find the wreck. So well, how can these people claim that he's not the owner of them, but they didn't go down and get them. Well, no, it, there must be different laws in different countries or different waters around uh, d certain right. countries that if that shipwreck is there, then some... that you need to return these. Ooh. Now, what I'm saying is yeah, this guy's made the mistake of actually registering for a permit to say that they were his legally, and that's how he got busted. They said, where did you get these from? And he said, I'm going to come clean the Batavia shipwreck off the coast of Western Australia, and they, the law is that you need to return them. They're not legally yours. If so he he's had... missed out on the money. What I'm saying, he had an opportunity to go black and, market. Uh, go black market yeah. and find out through someone else 
and he could have sold them another way and made a lot of money. Oh, and he's treasure when when doing the right thing bites oh, you. Oh, you never sucks. ever. It's like almost seeking forgiveness before um, permission. Well, over permission. Yeah. You know, go for forgiveness. Don't wait for permission. Well, he's the other one I've told you about before, but Amber Gree, which is the whale Amber vomit. Oh, yeah. Which is a whale mm. vomit, right? And whale vomit, it, it's apparently, it emits a, such a disgusting smell. It's a, it's a uh, ingredient sm- in perfume. You can smell it a mile off, but it's so strong, whale vomit, dried up whale vomit, that, yeah, perfume companies use it, and that's the ingredient that makes it stay on your skin mm. the longest. How amazing the first person who figured that out. I know. I'm going to take this whale vomit and put it on my wife's neck. So we had a friend who lives in Streaky <laughs> mm. Bay, South Australia, and he was walking the dog one morning, and there was this horrible smell for like kilometres up the beach. Probably and he thought kept it was the dog and walking, and he found this huge. I mean, this was this was a story, Sarah. It was a mm. huge story because it sells for like twenty dollars per gram US. It's worth more than gold. So they found this amber grease, which was fourteen point seven five kilograms. It was massive. The thing is, in Australia, you can't sell it because it's considered a whale product. It's Give a, me a break. It's illegal to sell in Australia, so I know for a fact, because they had the story on it, and then they got busted by authorities. They had to hide it, and then they sold it on the black market. But what do they want you to, you to do? Company. Like, if you're in Australia, we have whales. One of them spews. You want to use it for some money, and you're not allowed to? What a stupid I mean, thing it's to a police. Thing. Any byproduct from an animal can't be yeah. sold or can't be used. In, UK, in the UK and certain countries in Europe, you can. And that's why a French company got in contact with them. through Because this story went on the ABC. Someone contacted a French perfume company, and they went... Oh, mate, you would have been straight on the phone and gone, hey... Is that Chanel? They made about, like, they made about 250 grand. Don't you still doing that? The um, you still doing that number five gear over there? <laughs> you wanted to stick on the girls' necks? <laughs> I got your gear for you. It is a hail mary, but if you, ship it over there. Well, Tommy, you know the, the piece of art that your parents found in the attic. Oh yeah. So well, it, it, were they worried at all that there could have been this, that it belonged to somebody else? Yeah, no. They knew where it came from, and they they it was it was a gift. Um, in exchange for staying at, at, uh, at uh, I think, some accommodation. But the um, they didn't realise until the art dealer walked into the house, who was a friend, and said, what's that on your wall? That's an original. I think it was a um, pole or something. And then... Uh, and then blue poles. You had blue poles. You, you had the paint. No, something blue like poles. that at home. There's a pole oh. in your parents' house. And then, and, then, oh. and then he said, oh, my God. And Dad said, we can't afford to insure it because it's worth, you know, like $300,000. Oh. But see, then I would worry that Frankston, you would have to give that back. Yeah, that's right. But it, no, it was all legitimate because it was given by the artist himself. Then the artist died. Then it went up in price. Yeah. So then now it's in a gallery in Victoria. But like anything too, after a certain time, um, things can pass over to you legally, like mm. a boundary. Yes, you know, well, if you, fo- if you find money, that's what you have to do, don't you? Yep. You hand it into the police, and I think it's like 24 days or something if no one claims it. You're talking like squatters' rights, aren't you? That, mm, sort that of kind thing. of thing. But if, let's say, there's a boundary that we have and uh, the boundary's slightly off by a foot or something as a fence line runs towards mm. the back of the property, if that's not picked up, I think, within six years or something like that, then it legally transfers over to you. How funny, just, just nudge your fence. Go and adjust your bit. fence line slightly. 13, 24, 10, I'd love to hear from <laughs> someone. Rachel, in the Shire, what did your mum find? So my mum found a diamond tennis bracelet. Um, she did the right thing, handed it into the police, and then after, I think it was about a month, um, it was unclaimed, so she got given it back. Wow. Um, yeah, and then the funny thing is she actually sold it to my next-door neighbour for a couple thousand dollars, who then lost it a few days later. Oh, no. oh my God. Hopefully your mum finds it again. That's calm. Do you have any idea? I mean, was the two thousand dollars a value, or you did your mum did a favour there? Do you know what it was worth? She did discount it a bit because we were good friends with the neighbours, but she did have it valued, and I think it was about nine or ten thousand dollars worth. It's great, oh wow! It? God, yeah. see the other, yeah, the other thing you worry about that finding something like that or cash, you think it's linked to somebody dodgy. Oh. Yeah, and if there you are lying find, in bed. Like if it's a bikey or something and they find out that you've got it. I've seen a lot of bikies with tennis bracelets on. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a standard dress to have the bracelet and also the necklace looks them. really good on the Comanchero. Maddie in Penrith, what did your dad find, Maddie? 
Yeah, so my dad used to be the guy that mows the lawn, like the grass on the side of the freeways and stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's a three-man job. It's the guy that picks up the rubbish, the person that cuts, and then the person driving the truck that the grass goes into. And anyway, so dad was the picker-upper one day, and they found 10 grand cash in an envelope and just split it between the three of them. Yeah, wasn't good around them. Balmain, was it? <laughs> <laughs> that was seven and a half. Seven, seven and a half, oh, wasn't it? Still mm. the worst. Matty- but he also found a bike. Um, on the side of the road, and it was still good. So we managed to sell that on eBay for twenty bucks. See, this oh, there is you go. Of that, what, <laughs> a, what a day! And I love it how all because your old man could have kept that quiet and, and yeah. kept the whole lot, but he shared it with his mates, Maddie. Yeah, absolutely. And but they never all kept quiet about it for a few years, I guess, until I mentioned it on radio. So. <laughs> Great story, Maddie. James in Sutherland. What did your dad find, Jim? Um, so we were walking out of a shop in one of the Westfields and on the ground there was an envelope and people just kept walking past it. The dad decided to pick it up and he opened it up and there was a few grand's worth of money in it. So he took it to took it to the police, yeah. uh, didn't hear anything and then three months later they gave him a call and said, well, no one's claimed it, so it's all yours. Yeah, that's, that's You know what, credit to the police mm. for playing a legitimate game there. Mm. I mean, if you're a copper and there's two thousand dollars in the drawer, and you know that you can just say, "Hey, someone found it. Someone came in and claimed it." Well, that's when I lost the envelope. Mm. Seven, uh, when we sold BJ's car, and I left it on the roof of the car, and it fell off. I went to the cops, and that's that. That's what you do. If someone finds the cash, usually they go to the cops. Yep. And you wait that month. I went in there and said, "Guys, this is the story." Mm-hmm. And then you, there was a pause by the police officer, and I was like, "I reckon he's got it." And he goes, no, nah, nothing's been handed in. Truck was on you. <laughs> but you know what? Some other money could have been handed in, Fitz. So you should have said, you know what? I don't know whether it was seven and a half, two, could have been three. Yeah, some might have, have come out. Anywhere between. between. What if you, yeah, well, this is, what if you went into every police station around Sydney and said, I've, oh, lost, I've lost, I've lost a Roughly heap of Roughly five. <laughs> between zero and ten. And he goes, well, well is it 2,800? Yep, yep, that's fine. <laughs> Any others? <laughs> Let's go to Michael now in Glenwood. Did you get... All right, what did you find, Mick? Who was this? Uh, it, it wasn't a find. It's from what Whippa was saying before about stealing land. In, in the UK, before we moved over, we lived in a new house, um, and they built our road before they built the ones behind us. And as one, the whole road went out at night, and we moved our back fences back 10 metres to get bigger gardens. And so the ones behind us, that's obviously our smaller ones, and it wasn't noticed until we come to emigrate when we sold the house. Uh. And they checked the land registry, and the people we're selling to also then had to reduce our selling price, the money we were giving because we'd stolen the land. Because they'd moved the boundary. Oh, yeah. Do you know how many that. years they had to have it there for on their side? Well, 15, 15 years I'd lived in the house. Four years. It's on the land registry, so you can't steal anything. Oh, Michael, so how much, because it was smaller, the land, how much did that have to knock off the house? I lost £10,000. Oh, wow. kidding me. $18,000. See, our neighbours, Prue and Ed, I reckon I'm just going to carve a wedge off the back and see if they notice. It's like a bushy area in the right-hand corner. Yeah, Prue keeps it. texting I'll you. I'll just keep trimming. Gonna... And how long is it? 15 years. Yeah. About 15 years. It won't take long, but, jeez, it's a good way to make a, a little, little bit of extra <laughs> coin on your property. Take out his letterbox, Prue. See you later. The Fitzy and Whipper Podcast. The old airdrop game's a beauty, isn't it? Knowing that you can send a random, which used to be when it first came out, the gag would be if you're in a cinema or something and you can switch, you know, you go to send a photo and you hit airdrop and you'll see who else is on their phones. You know, it'll come up that so-and-so's there and you can send them a photo directly, no matter how jarring, no matter what it is, you can hit them with it. That's a great game. It's a really good game. It is. I mean, but, you know, people were going too far on trains. You know, there was nudes being sent and no one knew where they were coming from. It can get really creepy. I remember a sick joke that was played on Tom Ivy. I think we were in London, Fitz, so and sick. it was... Um, we'd made a, fo- <laughs> was a photo getting around of the back of Tom's head looking like a, like a dog that had rabies no, or it something. Like, it looked like a... Um, <laughs> yeah, or a bum hole What do you use in or... the sink? It's a... a yeah, yeah, the Steel 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, it was, and anyway, Tom was talking to this girl who was from Wagga. Remember that in the lounge, Tom? So we just started to take photos of you and then airdrop them to you, and her, because she'd opened her phone as well. And it can create some beautiful... 
beautiful, awkward <laughs> moments yeah. where the two of you just go, oh, okay. Yeah, because right. then you have to explain, well, mm-hmm. the, okay, I'm sorry, these are my friends, friends Fitz and Weber, yeah. and the, I, they think I have hair like still wool, <laughs> and I look like a dog <laughs> with rabies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, nice to catch up with Lo- you in the lounge. Lovely to chat, <laughs> see you on board, I suppose, for some cold meats and cheeses. Um, it's happened on an airline. Um, disappointingly, someone thought it was funny. You're right, Fitz, to start airdropping a few nudes around. I see that's wrong. Um, a great timing, though, to think everybody checks their phone when they land because you may have had to have the um, the flight mode on. So the minute that you land or before you take off, before they tell you to put your flight mode on, everybody's on their phones. So that's what you do when you're sitting in the seat. There's nothing else to do. So just a 10 out of 10 when it comes to timing and a chance to drop um, some nudes to some other people on board, except until the captain finds out and threatens to turn the plane around. Have a listen to this. So here's the deal. This continues while we're on the ground. I'm going to have to pull back to the gate. Everybody's going to have to get off. We're going to have to get security involved. And it's vacation that's going to be ruined. So you folks, whatever that airdrop thing is, put send a naked picture and let's get yourself to a gobble. <laughs> Jeez, it sounds like your teacher. Who did it? Was we're going to stay here all day mm. until someone Can't puts their hand up. Can you tell who did it? Doesn't it show who sent it no. to you? No, unless you go and have a look at everyone's genitals to identify the photo. No, but when, like, if, if I open my oh, phone right. and you airdrop, yes. doesn't it say Whipper's phone? I don't know. I, I don't think it does say it. It I doesn't tell it did. you where it's come right, from. It says, I'll try and airdrop Hang something on. to you right now. Let's see okay. if it comes up as Michael's phone. <laughs> I was laughing yeah. at yourself. Awesome. Okay, here we go. All right, airdrop. Okay, that so is. I've seen your phone come up. Yep. Sarah McGilvray's iPhone. Is that your neck? Yeah, Michael things? J. Whipley's iPhone would like to share a photo. Yeah, see, it does. Ooh. No, but see, what people do, Sarah, they, don't they have the name on it, they do they? They change the name of their phone. Like Crazy Bruce or something. Yeah, yeah. Crazy Bruce's big donger. Decline. And then you <laughs> airdropped. <laughs> oh, 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 airdrop attack. Coming in, coming in, coming in. Oh, Bruce, for crying out loud. Yeah, it's, it's a big not, unit. It's not a good game. And you can get, I, I think it's against the law, too, as they well. It can be some that laws. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Hey, coming up, what have you only just realised? Bottle of double chin gin to give away as well. And, and everyone goes into the running for first class and 50k. I've been getting some great calls. I love this segment. The inspiration for the word testify. The ancient Greek practice was men swearing on their testicles. That the Mona Lisa doesn't actually have any eyebrows. I've only just realised that the letter C in the word Pacific or Pacifically is pronounced differently each time you say it. Extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. I mean, if you are embarrassed, I mean, this can earn you a lot of money here and get you a great prize. Just Give us a call right now, 13 24 10. Annoys me people think you don't learn anything on this show. Use the hashtag SmartFunny. It's an educational program. What's the one, Jess, you sent me one the other day? The, um, the real meaning of dry cleaning. After 23 years, a man has found out. I should probably read it first before no, I go, go through No, go for it. This. What is it? A man's outstanding discovery is thousands of people in disbelief after a video explaining the real purpose of dry cleaning. Oh, God, here we go. Is it to be ripped off because dry cleaning prices go through the roof? I had a suit done the other day. It was $42 for dry cleaning. Good padding. Give me a break. It says here oh. that, that the dry cleaning meant that the clothes were cleaned dry. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Oh. I only just realised. With Fitzy and Whipper. So, no, no, I want to continue this. Okay, dry cleaning, yeah? So, I thought there was water involved as well. Mm-hmm. So, when you go get something clean, if you've got a stain on your top and you go get it dry cleaned, I thought there was water involved, but there's no water involved right. at what, all. What, That's why when you get, like, a silk item, it's so dry clean only because you're not supposed to wet it. What is it do you extreme do? extreme heat? It's like, I think it's like a steaming. Right, yeah. so there would right. have to be moisture somehow, Sarah, wouldn't there? Surely, but I, I, I don't know. So you're not silly, but it's certainly not a wet huh? um, process. So when you go to dry cleaning, there's no water involved at all. Mm. It's amazing. I mean, there is if there's and steaming if, involved. Yeah, there's got to be moisture, doesn't there? Yeah, there does. Mm. Mel in Northmead. Yeah. Hi, Mel. Hi, how are you this morning? Strong, yeah, Mel. Good. What have you only just realised, love? Well, I had to replace our electric kettle the other day because it was leaking. And I got my new kettle home and I've unpacked it and I've, I've grabbed the cord and it wouldn't reach where my electric sockets are in, on the kitchen wall. I'm like, because you know how you've got the base that the kettle sits on? Yeah. So I was like, oh, 
took a photo of my old cord and base and the new one beside it and was complaining about how short the cord was and they're going to have to take it back. And then a friend posted that, have you turned it over and Mm. looked underneath because they wrapped the cord around the base. Oh, there's more cord. You had no idea, did you, Mel? Oh, 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 what a moment, though, Mel. It's changed her life. There you go, Mel. Good call. Simone in Sackville North, what have you only just realised? Good morning. Um, I went to a birthday party, a family party, and I said to this six-year-old, because, you know, my kids are all grown up and I don't know what to say to a six-year-old, so I'm like, yeah, what do you learn at school this week? And she said, well, our money has docked on it for blind people. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, yeah. So anyway, so of course we all pull out the the notes and, and... all of Australian currency has um, Braille. Braille on it. Oh, the notes do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah my... for, for blind people and I had no idea. So these are the new... Pla- the, the, the paper ones back in the day didn't, did they? No. Have thought no, so. no, no, no. And I don't even think the sort of the first series of plastic mm. notes would have had Braille on them either. I think it's only the new ones. Yeah, anyway, I thought that was God, really cool. Yeah. I, thought I, just, I thought it was so cool that I told her she could keep all the money because it was my sister's. Well done. <laughs> That's great. Well done, Simone. Sarah in Taramara. Hi, Sarah. Hi there. What have you only just realised? What do you guys think about this one? Mm-hmm. No matter what, you are always touching something. Okay. No okay what if what? I'm completely nude in space with zero gravity? Well, I haven't tried that one, so I can't tell yeah, you. But even if you were, what are you floating around with no oxygen mask? Yeah. Yeah. So your no, body's just dead. dead and floating. No, I'm in space. But that's what I mean. No, but you're, you're no, dead. No, but I'm in, I'm in the sp- uh, International Space Station. So, but you, well, you're in a suit. No, I'm not. You have but you've to got be. clothes on. You don't on. have to be. You don't have to have clothes on, and you don't have to have oxygen when you're inside a space designed portable unit like the International Space Station. How do you get your... Cl- yeah, right, okay. In that moment, you would be touching nothing. Okay. Just a thought. There would have to be something in the air touching your body. No, there's I'm not. Sorry. No. No, there's not. No, nah, I'm no, sorry. There's not. I've, done, I've done extensive research, research on it. Into and there is something that's just hit your body. Nude, You're out. Nude You're space out. time. Oh, okay. He's okay. arrived in space with a shot put yeah, and he's thrown it at you. I've bumped into a wall. <laughs> James in Redfern, what have you only just realised? Hey guys, I found out that, uh, oh, today is of that, the word helicopter. Most people think that it's the word heli and copter. Mm. It's actually that the word helico is spiral and P, and the rest of it, PTR, is wing, as in like pterodactyl, helicopter. Ah. Oh. Go from the top on helicopter again. Helico, helico. so it's, you got to go. Helico is spiral. Yes. And then PTR is wing, one wing. And they got it, and which was used also in pterodactyl. Pterodactyl. Helicopter. Oh, which is the start of the spelling of pterodactyl. Ah, clever. God, James, that's good, <laughs> mate. That is really James, good. James, who told you? Where were you for that moment? Uh, I was uh, this morning just going through Google, and it just popped. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Well done, James. <laughs> well done. That's all it comes down to. Jimmy, yeah. just doing a bit of early morning well, research. what he's leading at the moment. Wow. Emma, Emily in Freshwater, what have you only just realised? Well, if you multiply a number by two, add six, divide it by two, and then take away your original number, you'll always end up with three. <laughs> All right, are we, is everyone ready to play along? Go are we going to try this? It. I mean, it's hopeless for anybody yeah, in the it's, car it's, uh, I mean, to the do it in the head. The, the kids, the, the kids right. play this. Go again, Em. If you multiply a number by two, mm-hmm. add six. Yeah. Divide it by two. Yep. And then take away your original number. You should have three. I do. That is true. That's, That's true. That you got me there. Says what number did you start I with? I started with three. Interesting. What did you start with? Nine. Oh, psycho. Well done, oh God, Emily. Emily it's she's it's dropped a, a bomb. It's a good little party trick, I suppose. Yeah. If you're at a house party. Hey, guys, hey, every, <laughs> Everyone get out some pens. Sometimes I bring my own patent pen and go, here, guys, pass it around, grab a sheet. Awesome. Let's do Jim, numbers. <laughs> we've got to go, James, with the helicopter, don't we? Jimmy, congratulations. You've got a James. Bottle t- double, double chin gin coming your way, mate. Fantastic. Awesome. Thanks, guys. The Fitzy and Whipper Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.